Good morning, folks. The sun has entered a nice, calm phase. We get these even in the most extreme solar cycles, like a two-week nap for the sun to gear up again. Let's get started today at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun, and despite there being no sunspots or eruptions, we've got space weather for sure. These coronal holes are sending enhanced solar wind our way. No chance this misses us this weekend. And right now, the solar wind at Earth is calming down from the last stream. Purple plasma speed returning to normal range as we wait another day or two for those next enhanced streams. Well, folks, it's pretty clear that the recent U.S. cold snap does deserve to be mentioned alongside Spain and China's record snow and cold events this year. It's global warming worldwide this winter to the dismay of Al Gore and Gavin Schmidt. Who? We'll come back to him momentarily. It's record cold and snow, and it's continuing. Up next, we're going to go to the Venus flytrap. I have no idea why the scientists decided to try this, but upon the snap, a magnetic field was detected. This is one of the cooler biomagnetism studies I've ever seen, even if it's not the first to show the involvement of plants with magnetism. It's basically like the MRI and EEG version of the analysis for the trap. Back to Gavin Schmidt. Named senior climate advisor at NASA with the goal of fostering an illegitimate president's illegitimate climate agenda aimed at illegitimately transferring wealth and cutting down freedom, using illegitimate models full of bias and uncertainty and illegitimately ignoring massive amounts of the published literature. All you really need to know is this guy's only solar forcing paper recently sought to determine its climate effects and looked at irradiance only. FYI, that was in 2020, three years after the release of the particle forcing data set which a man of this high stature illegitimately ignored. Couple interesting stories up next. One is looking at the layers of the sun and their coupling within the sun's overall dynamo. It felt like they were discussing solar climate forcing and they might as well have been given the importance of taking in both the internal and the external. And speaking of the external, amazing study on the supercharged Earth electron states achieved during solar storms. Not only is this how satellites are taken out, not only is this a bigger concern going forward as Earth loses its magnetic shield, but these detections may not have even been possible during geomagnetic maximum, say if we had these satellites a thousand years ago. In that same vein, the world of weather isn't missing the major polar vortex breakdown this winter, but they are missing its larger connection. It was indeed a major sudden stratospheric warming that occurred at the polar region, and it came months earlier than they usually come in the north. What's being missed is that the major events do happen when the sun is ramping up activity. Despite the quiet spell entered here the last week on the sun, the sun ramped up sunspots in the months prior, a tremendously strong start to cycle 25 actually, even at the low, non-scary levels yet. It should not be missed that the ramp up of the sun matched the sudden stratospheric changes again this year, and that will also be a more common thing as Earth loses its protection from the sun. By the way, if you recall, this northern polar cusp is the preferred entry point for solar wind protons. We greatly appreciate your support. Wind maps not cooperating this morning, and I've got to get out to Observer Ranch anyway to get some things accomplished for our first visitation starting next week. I am like a child, excited to see observers again after misunderstood exosome activity at the cellular level canceled the world last year, including our annual conference get-together. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.